Please welcome Jean Grosser. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, as you've just heard, my name is Jean Grosser. I am the COO of Vercel, and I'm excited to chat with you all today. Um, we have had a lot of incredible presentations today. And if there's one overarching takeaway, it's that AI isn't a feature or a product. It's an operating model that rearranges every part of how we run companies, how we make things, how we define roles, ultimately how we create value. The companies winning in AI aren't just adopting new tools, they're reimagining ways of working. Both Verzell and Notion are in the business of enabling our customers to adopt these new ways of working. In Notion, agent turns messy inputs into structured work. With Vercel, V0 turns intent into UI in seconds. But we're also AI-first businesses ourselves. And you won't be surprised to learn that Notion has played a big part in that shift for Vercel. I've spent my year working at developer-led companies, first at Google, then at Chief Business Officer at Stripe, and now at Vercel. I'm passionate about bringing novel approaches to bear on go-to-market. At Stripe, that's centered around adopting consumption-based business models. And at Vercel, it's reinventing go-to-market in an AI-first era. Over the course of my uh, career, I've found culturally that companies tend to skew towards one or two ends of a spectrum when it comes to building. On the one hand, you have written cultures. Stripe was a classic example of this. I think everybody knows Amazon, AWS, uh, also famous for hardcore doc written culture. And on the other end of the spectrum is a visual presentation. Uh, it's, this one is strongly embedded at Vercel and other creative companies like Apple. I like to call this docs versus demos. Uh, and there are huge strengths and admittedly drawbacks to both approaches. And they don't often play that well with each other. As you can imagine, transitioning between these two cultures can be a challenge. So what if written cultures and visual cultures could finally converge? As you saw today, they can when the doc literally produces the demo. Most companies uh, know that they need to rethink their approach to software, the software development lifecycle. At Vercel, we've already shifted to a world where the lines between designers, PMs, engineers are increasingly blurring and velocity is increasing. Now in its 10th year, Vercel is having its best year yet. We've introduced the AI Cloud, a unified platform for building, deploying, and running intelligent applications and agents. And we've seen 80% growth year on year, crossed over 200 million in ARR back in the spring. And despite V0 being in its infancy, over half of its customers are large enterprises. We iterate and ship fast, and our shipping velocity is driven by 16 different product areas. As you can imagine, a challenge emerged for us in recent years. How do we maintain our signature speed while ensuring quality and alignment across this broad group of product stakeholders? Enter, yet again, Notion. Notion has enabled Vercel to create cohesive, standardized systems that work for everyone. Product area plans help teams stay aligned through a central roadmap that connects high-level strategy to actual work. And Notion AI distills lengthy docs into executive summaries and transforms technical documentation into customer-ready messaging drafts that my go-to-market team can leverage. Like Notion, we're huge fans of quantifying impact. So here you go. 35% faster shipping, 89% confidence in quality, and nine hours saved per person weekly by running our operating system in Notion. AI, through the power of Notion, is giving our product teams a day back every week. I imagine everyone in this room has some sort of AI mandate. 
but you may not yet have a firm vision for how to deliver it. Today, I'd like to talk to you about how to successfully grow an AI-driven business, drawing from Vercel's experiences and those that we're learning and talking to a bunch of our enterprise customers. We'll do this through three lenses, people, practices, and product. More specifically, how to create AI-powered roles, context-driven workflows, and smarter products that drive competitive advantage through your company. So let's start with people. It's time to start hiring for roles that didn't exist a year ago. The first one is go-to-market engineering. This was the first role I added at Vercel when I was less than six weeks into the company. I'm now about six months into Vercel. Um, go-to-market engineering means that we build our go-to-market like a product. We determine what we want the customer, the customer to feel like, to be sold to by Vercel, and then we orchestrate those actions with AI at the foundation. So how do we do that? At a high level, we focus on three principles. We explore, we validate and incubate new technical ideas from engineering, product, and design into scalable go-to-market playbooks. We build, we ship code that drives revenue with AI and data, and we redefine GTM. We dog food the Vercel products and show customers how to redefine their businesses with agents, V0, the AI SDK, and AI Gateway. So to bring this to life, in June, just three months ago, we had 10 SDRs, sales development reps, working on inbound, contact sales leads. Um, and you know, everyone on the team had directionally similar plays, but we did have one SDR that was meaningfully outperforming the rest. Um, and so we paired that SDR with a GTM engineer. That GTM engineer watched their workflow, looked at all the data that they were working up, scrutinized the content, and then we were able to turn that in to an agent-based play. So it took us six weeks of a single GTM engineer to build and refine our inbound agent. As of August 1st, we not only have just one SDR, but also we are more effective at uh, qualification. We've gone from eight touches on average to get to an opportunity down to four, and our opportunity conversion rate has stayed steady all along the way. And the other thing we did is we've gone back and back tested everything and shown that when we disqualify an inbound lead, uh, we're right 99.5% of the time. We're moving with incredible velocity as we shift the go-to-market orgs to be AI first. And to make this happen, we've built pods. So what works really well is you take your best functional role, you pair them with a single go-to-market engineer, and someone from the data science org, and then they can codify the best human practice, augment it with data, build an agent, and iterate with a human in the loop. The next area is practices. As I said earlier, I think the company's best position to succeed with AI will be equal parts demo and docs. As a new leader at Vercel, the single most striking practice at the company is demo days. I was truly blown away when I started. So every single Friday at 8 a.m., and this is an engineering-centric you know, centric company, we do an hour-long demo day. They each last five minutes, so we do 12 of them every single Friday. The other thing that's striking is it's not just designers, engineers, PMs demoing, it's every function at the company. Go to market, legal, HR, finance, all up there going through what they're doing with V0, with their prototypes. There, this is also a great example of where Notion brings two cultures together. Every demo has a Notion page. The agent summarizes outcomes and next steps, and V0 embeds and preserves the artifact. This is what we call contextual documentation. So Notion not only serves as our company memory, but it's injecting context. And really, there's never actually been a better time to document every single thing you do. All of, that, all of that documentation is what you ultimately feed into an agent 
so that it learns how to be best at its job. Who here has heard of context engineering? All right, lots of hands, good. Uh, hot topic in the AI engineering community, but it applies just as much to go to market. Let me give you a concrete example of context engineering in GTM. So let's say, again, I'll use the SDR use case. We've sort of been starting here to try to automate things end to end. Uh, so you got a lot of SDRs around the world. Most of these folks are college grads um, and this is their first job, but you want them to reach out to an executive. In our case, that's often a CTO and a lot of these folks might not have engineering backgrounds themselves. So suffice to say, my experience has been that when they go and write an email that's meant to come from me to a CTO, it does not exactly look like how I would have written it on their first try. Uh, so here's what we do. SDRs go out and they do research. Uh, they learn about the company, they have a hypothesis about how our product would be a fit, and they draft emails in Notion. Uh, we then feed those into a Slack bot, which I then go edit. Um, and then I, I do this to match my voice, um, as well as have them be at the right altitude. I send them then out actually to that CTO we're trying to get in touch with, and I BCC an email alias. Um, and now we're able to take the research from Notion and the email content to make a gene agent. So after 30 days of doing this, we had this huge corpus of all the different emails that were gene approved that I felt comfortable sending to an e-commerce company, a SaaS company, um, almost always in our case, a CTO or a CPO. Um, and so that's helped our SDRs refine their content without me and essentially has now taught 40 SDRs uh, how to talk just like Gene every day. So we use it effectively as a coaching tool. They'll go and write an email and then the Gene agent is like, meh, didn't get this right. Like, you know, no executive reads a thousand words. Let's get this down to 20, uh, that type of deal. <laughs> um, but by, the, by Q4, we think there will now be a portion of those emails that we have enough confidence to actually just go let the agent send context now trumps data alone. And while today we're using that system, as I mentioned, to train the SDRs to write like an executive, we don't think we'll be doing all of that work by the end of the year. This is the power of context engineering, systematically capturing not just what you do, but why you do it, how you think about it, and what excellent really looks like. The companies that win will be the ones that are most intentional about capturing and structuring your institutional knowledge. Finally, let's talk about products. Uh, Mark Andreessen once declared that software was eating the world. And I'm here to say that I think that software with a fixed schema, so one that forces you to adopt its workflow, is dead. Software behemoths have often touted, I think everybody's heard this, for every $1 spent on our platform, $7 are spent in the ecosystem at large. And I would purport that that was a bug, not a feature. Composable software and autonomous agents will give us the per company and per user workflows that we've always sought. This is where V0 and Notion agent represent something bigger than individual features. No shit, or V0 has been labeled, for better or worse, you know, vibe coding. It enables you to then go create that um, per user software. And similarly, Notion is in that vibe working for getting to more structured output. I'm sure many people in this room are Salesforce users. How many of you have ever sat at your desk and thought to yourself, man, this is exactly how I wanted to do this type of work? Yes, exactly. Said no one ever. <laughs> so the reality is we've been stuck with these fixed front ends and workflows that force us to work the way Salesforce or Workday or uh, ServiceNow um, thought was best to work. And absolutely nothing wrong with any of those companies, right? I've used Salesforce for 20 years at this point. Um, but these powerful systems will continue to be important systems of record providing guardrails and workflows that are business critical. But what's changing is that the marginal cost of custom software is trending to zero. And that's gonna usher 
and an opportunity for composable systems of action. So Notion should have its own Salesforce front end, just like Vercel should have its own Salesforce front end, which is different because we have fundamentally different businesses trying to achieve different things in our sales cycle. Retail figured this out years ago with headless commerce. Macy's front end doesn't look anything like Allbirds, but they can both run on the same underlying system of record, whether that's Shopify, Commerce Cloud, or something else. The rest of us across all the other verticals are now just catching up to what retail has known for years. We've seen incredible results from personalization in Vercel's e-commerce customers from eBay to Elk Shop, and now we expect that same level of customization to carry forward into all software experiences. Every company we talk to is somewhere on the AI maturity curve. Most have built some sort of assistant a chatbot, or an embedded uh, AI feature. The next step is agents that can automate business processes or trigger workflows, either to make employees more productive or deliver better customer experiences. From there, the leap is to fully autonomous systems that can orchestrate entire workflows end-to-end, -end, proactively surface opportunities, and make decisions across systems with minimal oversight. As AI workloads become a larger part of application traffic as we move up the curve, companies need to consider whether it's effective to build AI infrastructure themselves or engage with a company like Vercel that specializes in it. And beyond your tech stack, I challenge you to think about how, how you work. To build an AI-first business, your company has to deeply understand best practices of your ways of working. You can't just slap an interface on top of a bad process. AI is like building a house <laughs> during an earthquake. The ground is always moving, so you can't just build AI as a feature. You need to make AI your operating model. Thank you, everyone, for having me.